The extent of the wind farm developments has increased dramatically over the last couple of years. Uh, we've been fighting wind farm development for more than 10 years in this part of the Eastern Cape. But because the Eastern Cape has such a lot of wind, it's an ideal place for developers to come and place these wind farm developments. And if you take the landscape that runs from Makanda slash Grahamstown across to Bedford, I think currently there are already 650 wind turbines up in that particular region. And if all these other projects that are planned and are proposed go ahead, they're going to end up with approximately 1,200 wind turbines in that region alone. So it'll change that landscape, you know, forever in our opinion. Vultures are the fastest declining bird species in the world. Um, with regards to the Eastern Cape, you know, the Eastern Cape used to be a, a stronghold for specifically Cape vultures and over the last you know, a couple of years, the species have declined substantially. So we know wind farms in Europe, for example, have caused um, massive declines on avian species and specifically uh, vulture species and large eagles. In South Africa, there's no difference to that. The problem though lies with our uh, turbine placements is that often they are selected in exactly the same areas where our vultures forage and thermal. And this creates major issues for our vultures because, you know, vultures thermal and forage on your, your mountainous areas, for example, they rely heavily on thermals. Um, uh, hot air rises and creates these pockets of uh, thermals which um, the vultures glide on. And it's exactly the same method and reasons why your wind farms place these turbines at these specific locations. And wind farms, uh, specifically collisions with these wind turbines are um, and will potentially um, wipe out vultures in the Eastern Cape because of collisions. They are significant markers on, on the landscape. Um, if you just consider the height in excess of over 200 meters, um, whereas nothing else in that area is probably above six meters. So you, you're going to, these are going to be visible from, from an enormous uh, sort of perimeter around the development. It's really difficult to take something so industrial as a, as a wind turbine and try and get it to coexist within a, a wild landscape. I think one of the, probably the only mitigating factor is to reduce the warning lights at night and to reduce the visual impact on wild spaces. I think as soon as they become intrusive to those wild spaces, they nullify the protected area uh, status of, the, of that area. And uh, all intents and purposes, the balance is very, very difficult to find. What people need to realize about the Eastern Cape is that we are a uniquely biodiverse destination um, at a global level. And the rewilding that has taken place here, which has been exclusively developed through ecotourism, is a massive contribution to global biodiversity and conservation efforts. It has had incredible impact on communities. And these wind farm developments that are now proposed in this area will have an extremely negative influence on that ecotourism business as well as the future potential of this area to employ people, to bring foreign currency into this area and obviously to support our growth and restoration of biodiversity here. In allowing the wind farms and allowing the development at that scale within the Eastern Cape certainly is counter to what we're wanting to achieve as a tourism product. Um, what is important for us within the tourism sector is to offer an environment that has already had much and massive impact from a human development point of view and to curate it and preserve it in as natural state. I believe that is what people want to come and see, view and experience in the Eastern Cape in particular is large wide open spaces with limited um, impact. And for us, it's an important aspect that we will preserve this. This is our, this is our cause, this is our um, calling, if you want to call it that, is to create conservation and wildlife spaces. And to facilitate that through tourism as a means to drive that.
I think it's important to note in this instant and in the, and in the Eastern Cape area uh, who the developer is. Uh, the developer of the Albany wind farm and the wind farms adjacent to Addo, which are the most misplaced approved wind farms in the Eastern Cape, uh, are, are EDF Renewables, which is 100% owned by the French government. They, together with another French developer, ANG, in which EDF also has a stake, are the only developments, developers in the Eastern Cape who are trying to, to place uh, wind farms in highly critical areas. And it's such a... Um, uh, the irony is so profound that, that you sit with this, this old African colonial power, which is really now exercising neo-colonialism. It's difficult to understand how someone in their right mind, knowing all the negative impacts of what they are doing, uh, would continue to do this uh, and, and continue with the development. It, it, it makes one believe that, that somewhere in the process, with the South African government also approving their developments, uh, something is not, is not adding up. I think others would have said this, but we are not anti-wind farms at all. They, they're a necessary uh, uh, part of the, the power mix for South Africa and the world, but it's a very simple matter of keeping wind farms in areas which are more appropriate and which have less of an impact on, on where you put them. So we've all seen the areas around uh, Bedford and Cookhouse, and we've seen the areas around Jeffreys Bay. Those are very appropriate areas for wind farms. It's commercial farming. It's not uh, uh, tourism based or nature tourism based. Uh, there's no real direct impact on on, on wildlife, although there is some, but it's, it's a, a necessary evil. But to then move that industrial landscape into your most pristine, your most sensitive uh, biodiverse areas, uh, actually in, in, in the world, some of these areas, is just a, a, an absolute travesty and should never be done.